The first time you were on my show, you were at UCLA, and you were, you were uh, the president of the African St uh, Student Union, and you guys were demanding uh, money from UCLA, something like $40 million endowment. Did you receive that? We did. We did. And where did that money go? So the money is basically, it's not necessarily a complete lump sum of money. It's an endowment. So it's a system where they're creating a pot, basically, to receive donations to the university, appropriated specifically for the needs of Black students. So that could be when it comes to more uh, re resources for their community service programs or more resources for the um, tutorship programs that we have and the peer counseling programs that we have for students. It can also come in the form of financial aid or for the Black student housing. Um, but it, it's not necessarily earmarked for one pot. It can also go into the African American Studies Department. I'm not hands on with necessarily where all of it is going. Right. But kind of the general idea from what we agreed to. Oh, okay. um, because right after I'm around the same time that we had our meeting, that's when all of our demands were actually met. So we had agreement about that then. Um, now, three years later, almost all of them are enacted. Amazing. Um, now that you are a more mature, you, you've gone through Howard Law School, do you think it's time out for blacks begging for free stuff? Will they ever stop begging, you think? Well, the way you say begging is problematic in the first place. What do you, um, what do you mean? That's why we label it the way we do as a demand, because it's essentially you're demanding what you're already owed. And the reason, it's, it's an issue of equity, not an issue of I want more or I want something different. It's an issue that black students have already been disproportionately uh, discriminated against and not enrolled into universities like UCLA. And so with that, it's much difficult when you have many students coming into a university who have no connection to the university experience. So they don't have much guidance or resources or support. And so we're just asking for the little bit to level the playing field. So I don't think that, and especially going through law school and learning the law, and equity is read into, and um, it's, it's read into the law, but it's, it's actually in the law. And that's our system. There's a systematic problem with that. So because of that, I don't think the playing field will ever be leveled unless people continue to demand for what they're owed. Amazing. Um, I have, since you were on the show, I've spoken to blacks, Hispanics, and whites from UCLA. And most of the Hispanics and whites say that the blacks at UCLA are not really smart people, that they don't, the reason they're not getting in or they don't get in because they don't really study for the test and they're not really, they don't work hard because they've been trained that they can get it based on being, you know, being black and that the SAT scores and those things are not necessary for the blacks, but all the other races have to earn their way except the blacks. So they don't really like the blacks because they are like pushing out people who work hard to get it simply because of their color. What do you say to those people? One, I don't know who you talk to because my experience at UCLA was very much, I, we, there was a few that created a divisive environment, yes. But the Latino, Latinx community were some of my greatest allies and greatest friends at UCLA. Um, and even some white students as well. But as far as that directly about admission rates and what goes into being admitted, first off, UCLA has a holistic admissions process. So they actually don't, they can't even see whether or not you're black or white or Latino or anything on your actual application. Second of all, the numbers speak for itself. Of all of the black students who actually are admitted, there's a commensurate rate, like the amount of students that apply the issue isn't the application rate, it's, and it's not the admittance rate, it's the enrollment rate. So out of the applicants that apply, most black students are actually admitted, but the issue is about the environment that makes them feel comfortable with enrolling. And the issue that I had taken issue, that I took up when I was there was about the graduation rate as well. A substantially slimmer amount of them graduate. Um, but now, that's because they don't really try. You know how blacks don't, nowadays, they don't have to put much effort in it. It's just about color, not character. So 
So I came in as a pre-law student, but my sister, I'm a, as I told you back then, I'm a twin. My yeah. twin sister is me. Um, most Black students, I would probably say two out of three Black students coming into UCLA come into pre-med program at UCLA. And UCLA, as it was then, is now, as 10 years ago, it's the number one pre-med institution. And it's such a massive institution. It's a leader school. Their whole point in the pre-med departments or the different majors that are pre-med majors is to weed out students. And the easiest of that are the, the minority. So when you come in, most of the department, probably about 60% of the department will be Asian. Uh, 30, I won't say 60%. You can, you can probably split that. It'll probably be 40 and 40, Asian and white. And then there will be a very slim major, minority that are Latino and a very slim minority that are actually black. And my sisters told me that the entire experience of being a pre-med, the most important thing is your ability to come into groups and work with each other. And now this is where microaggressions plays a huge part because they are automatically pushed away because of that assumption of what you said, the presumption that a black student is less than, less than an intel intelligence and capability to move forward and work at it. And it's really those notions that harm their experiences and also harm their academic progress at our institution. Because it's all about your ability to, to, to come in. But at least the black give that impression because they are always whining and begging. You never hear them just simply working hard, uh, putting their best into it. They always whining about, oh, my color. I can't get it because of my color. So they give that impression that they are not smart enough or they don't work hard enough to do it.